Hi everyone, I am back to show you a new tutorial. It's more of a breakdown than anything. Um, I recently got in contact with someone about doing some freelance work and this is one of the shots that he had. Uh, you can see that he shot it so there's shadows involved and quite quite frizzy hair. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to show you my process on how I would go about doing this shot. Uh, so to begin with, you can see what I'm going to need already. So whenever I get shots, I look at what I need and I know I'm going to need rotor because of the way that I'm... When I key this, you'll see, uh, it will grab back this, the shadowy color, which is not what I want. and to keep it on the plate you can see how I've got it on the plate and I'm just maintaining all that um, contact shadow just to help sell that he's in the plate so to begin I'll grab my footage examine what I need and I know I need roto so if I press M on the keyboard you can see my roto mats so that I tracked it in marker um, I just exported the a match move from it. There's many ways you can do that. You can create a uh, add layer new mask and then go into the transform and copy over the transform information and then it'll be tracked to that layer, which is always generally useful. But I just want to do this quick and efficiently. So you can see my map for that. Um, then I go on to D spills. So I do a core D spill, which gets rid of any green that I don't want. And these little lace buckle things are very reflective, which isn't ideal because they will reflect green and anything surrounding it. But just take that out. Uh, that. I believe that is one for the hair. I just wanted the hair a little darker. I just key mix that in. And always bring back the luminance. That's what I do. It's very subtle. But I'm keeping some colour. Um, then I go on to Edge D Spill. Now, Edge D Spill is its own little thing that I might do a bigger video on because. When I see people keying and they're getting edges, it's normally due to their D spills and edge D spills. So, yeah, I might do that in a bigger video, but I just do a standard, it's not too far from the core D spill. Um, and I kept this here because I originally did this, but when I played the footage, you could see some fuzzing and wobbliness in the. D spill which isn't ideal so yeah you don't want to push it too far because then you will get artifacting like that which isn't ideal then ooh, if it doesn't crash on me that would be very very great ah, there we go so denoise the plate standard get a prime mat and this is my core mat that I do so you can see already it's picked up the shadows, which is not what I want. Uh, no matter how crunchy I make this, it will always pick up the shadows. So what I do is stencil out the um, that section, because I know I don't want it. I bring back in the alpha that I created, so the roto that I created. I clamp the alpha, because I don't want values going over one, because it might give me some weird issues. Then I erode it, erode it, and I eroded the head some more because that was giving me slight issues. Um, yeah, so now I went on to the edge D spill. And I might do a separate tutorial going through the actual process, but this is more of a breakdown just to show you how I've done it. So, key, just a standard key here. I make sure I don't get all this fuddiness. 
So I crunch it, and that's just with the white point and black point. Clamp it because I have pushed it too far. If I did not clamp it, you can see my values of my alpha are 3.1, um, and that will give you issues down the line. If I look at the filter erode, I just eroded it slightly. The head again, I just did that separately. Then I keyed with a IBK. You want to get as close to the edge of the character or whatever as possible. Um, this is due to any additives. You want to get the cleanest cl uh, clean screen that you want, well that you can. Sorry. So I knew what I wanted. So I grabbed a bigger roto, stenciled it out, and in it's important to stencil it but as well as change the alpha to be unpremolted essentially by taking the white point all the way down so all your edges are unpremolted like that because if you didn't do this or if you just did that and you start eroding back out you'll start getting this which isn't what you want so if you do that issue's gone uh, just crop it, sometimes the bounding box goes mental. Just grab the corresponding IBK gizmo that there's two uh, IBK gizmo and color. Grab the corresponding, make sure it's green, Ooh. make sure it's green, and then just mess with what you want. Uh, sometimes I do luminance because that will give me better edges, but I, I knew it didn't. Then I just gamma, yes, I'm crunching the key a bit, but that's okay. Because I'm going to pick up most of that with my additives. So now screen that. I think I just did the hair actually. Yeah, I just did the hair. I did another key, and that was the body. I just wanted more edges, well, more edge detail. Did another hair key, crunched it a bit, so I brought down the gamma eroded the hair slightly more, stenciled out the feet because again it was giving me the shadows which I didn't want. I brought back my alpha, just over it, you can screen it over it, doesn't really matter. Then this is the core mat. I eroded it outwards completely take down these, clamp it just to make sure that it goes to one and then I mask it so anything outside of that little section that I wrote it out gets taken away so that gets taken away that sort of gets taken away. Screen back the core mat then I just drew a rough pole rotor for that. I copied back in my alpha, so now I've got a alpha for that. This is a global transform that I used because I had to re-rack the character. And then I did some slight grading to match him to the plate. So that's an overall grade. There was some green in the shoes, so I just used a uh, hue correct and took down the green slightly. Um, did a rough roto of the shadow on the feet. Um, then I did a slight light coming from this side. That's just a really rough roto. And this is all to integrate it better to the plate. And then I pre molted it. So if I switch this off. I switch this off you can see how how much has changed then as for the background it originally came to me at 1080p I reformatted it back to the working res of the uh, foreground plate which is 4.6k lifted the blacks this is just general tweaking of the background put a light at the back slightly just to bring out the character's head a bit more because I darkened him down to match 
brought down the saturation because this red and the blue was a little too much. Uh, defocused slightly and the reason I do a gamma is I gamma down to 0.5 and that's just to sh um, pop out the highlights and when you defocus and then gamma back to 2 it makes the bokeh pop slightly. So if I didn't, you can see the difference. I just sort of like that in this. Then I did some chromatic aberration on the edges, as you can see. This was made by my friend from uni, Liam Barlow. Uh, it was quite useful. And then I blurred the uh, CG by a tiny bit. Uh, it's not that much noticeable. In fact, I could probably do it to maybe 1.45 because CG is always perfect when you render it. So, yep. Then I did additives. Now, I might do a separate tutorial for this because additives and getting the right additives is crucial. But you can see what it essentially does. It brings it takes your clean plate that you created, takes your foreground and your background and does a sort of difference between it. So you just get the character, um, then you over that over the plate. Then I wanted some more hair detail I believe. Yeah. Uh, just lifted the hair slightly because it was crunching it a bit too much. Then, as for the shadows, I did another additive. See here. Just to bring back the shadows is contact shadows and some more hair. And you can see how much hair detail I'm getting back. I could probably push it a little bit more, but again, it the blacks sort of. If my key is a little smaller than this, you will see this black edge, which you do, because this is still a whip. Then I add some slight grain, uh, some more hair detail, just to bring, just to make it pop a little bit. Uh, there. Can't remember what that's for, but. I'll do a longer version of this, but this is just a breakdown of the shot that I'm busy working on. And then, if I view the end, as it's still a whip, there's some edges here and there that I need to sort out. But you can see when it does it, it's quite heavy this, because um, it's 4.6K. But when it does it, I'll go between the green screen and the plate when it's loaded. Now I might have to rescale or rejig him just to match the scene better and then I'll grade the shot, the background slightly more um, just to help him sit, sit in. But you can see, if I go back to the original, you can see the, by doing additive and doing the roto of the feet. It's not it's not nice roto, but it has to be done sometimes. Um, and you can see how I'm keeping the detail in the feet. Well, in the shadow, sorry. Uh, compared to the plate, it's quite, quite good. And then, as well as the hair. Yeah, I'm on edit load. So I'm keeping all that hair detail. You can see I'm getting a slight edge there, which I will sort out. But, going from one to, uh, you can see I'm keeping the majority of the hair in without any edges. And yeah, so in the future I might do a longer version of this if people are interested. But apart from that, I hope everyone's doing okay, and yeah, so I will see you in the next one.